What is up, my boo-boos? I hope everybody is well. We're here for our Saturday night secret sermon. This is our Secret Teachings of Jesus series where I delve into the Gnostic Gospels. We like to do this after midnight when we can. Um, a lot of the sages of old found that it was a very powerful time of night to study at midnight. Uh, this is the time of day where the veil is at its thinnest, so we have a we're more exposed, so to speak, for good and for bad. So the nighttime uh, has an absence of physical light, and the light of the creator is literally present within physical light, and the absence of physical light makes it more attractive for dark energies to wander around. So by studying holy scriptures like Torah and whatnot, Zohar and uh, holy books of, you know, theology and such, uh, it puts you into like this surrounding light of protection during this time of day. Also, because of the fact that we're on the threshold of the end of one day and the beginning of the next and the, the veil is thin, and because we are pushing our, ourselves outside of our comfort zone to stay up late, we can actually reveal even more light in the things that we read. And as well as, so when you study like spirituality and scripture and Torah, Sometimes when the light is revealed to you, we have to like earn that light. Uh, so that means that sometimes we have to go through a process. So what that means in like human talk is, have you ever read a self-help book or like something about spirituality and it's like the moment you open the table of contents, it's like something knocks on the door, your phone rings and it's like instant challenges related to the book. <laughs> It's like as soon as you start learning material, the universe sends you simulations to like use that material that you just learned and embody it. So it feels like you're like starting to be tested like right away. So when we read uh, scripture and study scripture after midnight, that adds a layer of protection so you can ground in the wisdom without having to say like go through some chaotic process to uh to embody it all right so this came about because i just was really interested in reading the lost gospels and the forbidden gospels and i wasn't sure when i would get around to doing that or making it a discipline so i thought it'd be a really great idea to make this a segment on the channel that we could all enjoy together and so we are in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. These are the codexes found in Nag Hammadi, Egypt that had been lost to antiquity. And let's see what else of note. At the beginning of, if you go to my channel, Light Love Magic, and you go ahead and subscribe, uh, you will find the Secret Teachings of Jesus playlist. And if you scroll back to the beginning, you will find videos from the Secret Book of James, which was very fun. It was very, like, dialogue-driven, scene-oriented. Uh, but for a while now, we've been moving through the Gospel of Philip, which is these, uh, which are these, like, individual portions of text and they're really cryptic and esoteric, and they're meant to be like meditated on. All right, so tonight's portion is called The Priest. Um, it's one of the more surface topical oriented portions that we've had. A lot of these can go pretty deep, but this one is kind of pretty direct and straightforward. Um, if you, uh, if you haven't been a, a, a passenger on one of these rides before, I am going to read you the portion a couple of times. It'll start off pretty choppy and horrible, and eventually it'll get a little better. And then I will go line for line and we'll unpack what this is talking about. 
Okay, and I'm not a theologian. I just, I get downloads. I get insights um, into the material. I usually come in from work and pick out a portion that starts standing out and then I just turn on the camera. And I do study Kabbalah. I'm a Kabbalah student. So a lot of these references and codes are something that I've learned about through Kabbalah sometimes, but other times it's just like these insights coming through. So I always think it's like good to mention that as a caveat. Um, some of you are returning viewers and some of you might be new. So it's good to give you a little context before we just jump in. But now we're going to jump in. So hold on to your seats. All right. So this portion is called the priest. The holy person is completely holy, including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with the cup or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body also? Okay, so let's go back. The holy person, and there's a footnote here, and it says that it's, uh, or the priest. So the, ho the holy person or the priest is completely holy, including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with the cup or anything else that the person takes up and consecrates. Now in this line, they are making a reference to the Eucharist, taking the wine or the chalice, the vessel of wine and the bread. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body also? Okay, so... <clears throat> This is pretty straightforward. We're just talking about in the particular in this piece, we're talking about a priest specifically. The holy person or the priest is completely holy, including the person's body or the priest's body. The priest who takes up the bread and the uh, for the communion or the Eucharist. So the person who takes up the bread um, and consecrates it and does the same with the cup, the cup cup for the wine, the, the communion, or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body? Okay, so we're saying that like to consecrate something is to assign something a holy purpose, to set apart, to make sacred. Um, in this particular uh portion, they're speaking particularly about priests, but I think that in general, a seeker or uh, all of us really are vessels for the light and our bodies are temples for the soul to be expressed through and to live in and to dwell. It's like a vehicle for our light body, right? And our spirit, our soul and our spirit and our heart and our consciousness. So... <clears throat> Our body uh, is a temple in a way, and it's here to serve as a vehicle for the creator to experience the physical world through, right? So if you were to think about like your house and like, hey, the creator's coming over, is the house in good order? Is, have you been taking good care of the house? Like, is everything, you know, kind of prepared for the creator to stop by? You're like, no, my God, I've got to clean the floorboards. I've got to, I've got to like bleach the bathroom. Nothing's ready. I've got to like wipe out the microwave. We go, like the creator cannot look in the microwave. <laughs> we don't even have a microwave. Just throw it in the backyard. <laughs> so same for the body, right? I thought about that recently for the first time. I was like, wow, like the creator dwells within me and perceives through my conscious experience of my unique journey through this world. So am I giving the creator a good place to come stop by in, right? Am I clothing myself in such a way that is conducive to like expressing my authentic high vibration, right? And that can be different for everyone, but like, how am I taking care of my physical body? Am I 
healthy? Do I treat my body well? Do I take good care of my skin? Do I have good hygiene? Do I, like like basic stuff here? Because, and we've talked about this in Kabbalah class before too. Sometimes we think like, oh, what is my problem? Is it this like deep secret, these deep wisdom secrets? What, do, what is my problem? And so many times our problems is like, maybe it's just topical. <laughs> like maybe it's just basic, right? Like if you have ailments and health problems, you know, and anxiety and things, then maybe like, just like look at your routine and look at what you're eating and look at your diet. But think about like how we make our choices in the way that we treat our bodies and in the way that we treat our health. Like we, we can do that in a conscious way that is not just to maintain our own comfort and longevity and health, but think about it like you're a vessel for the light of the creator. You're an ambassador for the light of the creator. And every day we're given this moment, this time, this space to go out into the world, to transmute our own darkness to help others, to share, to share our gifts, to put our gifts out into the world, to make a difference, to make an effort. And so if I go out in the world and I don't feel good and I haven't had good sleep and I don't, I'm not eating well, you know, or I ate um, a bunch of fast food, which is delicious, but now I've got like the, the, the spike of energy and now the crash, you know, and I'm not taking good care of myself, like your energy levels aren't as good. Your your mood levels aren't as good as they could be. So it's actually like a sacred act of, of you know, worship and praise and respect to the creator to take really good care of yourself. It's not just vanity to look your best, right? Because if we want to be like the creator, right? If we're, if we're spiritual students, and the whole point of our seeking is to build affinity with the light of the creator and become more like the creator. Well, the creator, like if the creator was in human form, would be, you know, in like they, they the creator would at least have good, clean cleanliness, right? Clean, clean habits would take care of their self as good as they could. They, you know, exercise to keep the body energetic and healthy and mobile and strong and comfortable. Um, the, the way that they dress, it wouldn't necessarily have to be elaborate, but it would, you know, it would be put together in a way that would not get in the way of the, the message, like bringing the message, like our soul, our spirit, our purpose in this world has value, has meaning. So we want to put our best foot forward, right? As examples of the light. So if you're going around like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, <clears throat> trying to tell you how the creator has done good things in my life, but then you, you're like, you look like shit, you're, you're a mess. <laughs> You feel like crap, you know, you're, you're like eating poorly. So you're all broken out. Like, I don't know. You're just like depressed because of the, the chemicals and the factory created foods and you're not like sleeping well and you're not like getting good exercise. So you're, you know, your, your willpower, your drive is low. You're just like, oh, you know, it's not going to be compelling. Right. But when I, I noticed something interesting. It was like I was watching like live streaming um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur through the Kabbalah Center. And I couldn't help but notice like how good looking everybody was. <laughs> like just like well taken care of. Like everybody was like, it's not like everybody was perfect or anything, but it's just like you could tell everybody had made, made an effort to look nice and to take care of their health and to like, you know, be a good vessel like take like cherish their vessel we are sacred vessels and so it's we only get one body while we're here so it's important that we treat it with respect and so you know i love 
you know, eating poorly and junk food and pizza and all that stuff too and candy. But it's like, you've got to get a good balance, right? So I normally, I don't eat a lot of junk food at home. I cook from whole ingredients and I don't, I'm not really strict with my diet. Like I eat a really rich diet, but I just don't eat a lot of like fake foods and chemical preservatives and things like that. Don't eat a lot of fast food. So I pick my, my splurges, but I feel so good most of the time and I have really good energy levels and I have very good health and I don't have a lot of like ailments and I hardly ever get sick. And I would attribute a lot of that to the fact that like I, I eat a good diet. I try to drink water for the most part if you know if I'm not drinking coffee or like hot herbal tea and I ex I get good exercise I like to take long walks in nature I like to get cardio I like to do like body resistant strength training so like I do think that that does contribute and I I feel good most of the time like when I come home from work and I think, oh, I, I want to be, I want to have bad willpower and not do secret teachings of Jesus after working uh, a shift at work and it's midnight or after. And then I did all the stuff that you do during the day before work. I'm like, oh, but I feel great. I have good energy levels. I, you know, get good enough sleep and I take care of myself in such a way that I can have the energy to show up, right? So I treated myself sacred treated the body sacred. Um, the same with sex, sexual contact, sexual contact with people. I so it turned into like some kind of <laughs> like English professor. So with sex, we are getting soul residue on us when we have sex with people. And unfortunately, it can even start with like kissing because you're swapping the breath of the soul back and forth. Now, this might sound fine and okay, except when you get their soul residue, when you like unite with someone in sex, you take on their tikkun. Like maybe not the whole thing, but like you get residue of the karma that they have to work off. So it may not manifest in exactly the way that it does for them, but it may mean like more chaos of your own particular brand that you've got to work off. So like... Tikkun, if you're not familiar, is like our souls travel with us life after life. So in every different life, we've got these soul contracts to work out and these plans that we agreed upon before we um, incarnated on earth. And it's like we've got to live through these certain scenarios and, and situations and experiences. And we have certain people that come in and out of our lives. And we have specific parents. And we're born in a specific place. And we have specific wounds and things that trigger the weaknesses within our soul that we need to balance out or strengthen or correct. Um, as well as a cosmic scale like the one you see behind me where our positive and negative deeds are weighed over the course of our lifetimes. And so as we go through intense, like pain, struggle, mild chaos, like, oh my gosh, like I got a parking ticket and then I, I ran over something so I got a leak in my tire. And you know, those like little things that just add up to like a bad day. Or like some crazy stuff that just starts going on. Maybe it gets more serious than that. Maybe it's like a car wreck or, you know, oh, a chronic illness or what have you. But these uh, illness, pain, unpleasantness, um, chaos, these things help us work off the negative side of our scale and transmute that into light. So when we talk about experiencing judgment or chaos, it's related to this, this. So, um, so where were we? We were talking about, oh, doing tikkun, right? So we were talking about being really mindful and intentional about like sex, because when you have sex with someone, your souls are adjoined. And so then you're left with their soul residue and you get their tikkun. 
And so your tikkun is like, you know, it's strengths and weakness, uh, strengths and, and talents, but it's also like the weaknesses and the things that you struggle with. It's like your temper and your, your, uh, like your drinking problem, like the, the things that you have that like you struggle with, um, maybe like generational curses piled in, um, things in your personality that could use like finesse you know, these are tikkun issues. And so if you're sleeping with people, then you're taking on their tikkun issues. And if you're like, man, I've had to go through a lot of just BS lately. I don't know why. Or like, have you ever dated someone who turned out to be like a narcissist or something? And they were maybe negative and then you started making less money or like you had money problems or something afterwards. Like it's weird. It seems unrelated, but it, it might be actually exactly related. So it's important that we treat our body as something sacred, right? Sacred uh, and holy because not only is it a temple for our own soul and our own spirit, but we are like, hosts for God too. And so it's like, are you giving God a good experience to have through you? You know, um, are you treating yourself with respect and dignity, but also are you making choices that are going to help you be the best vessel that you can be for the light that day? All right. Are you making choices that are going to respect your vessel and give you energy and give you, you know, the, the motivation and what you need to continue to share and to show up and do your purpose and do your, your good works in the world. Uh, because it does take like a, like a lot of energy just to be in the world an adult and maintain not wanting to like murder people, right? So when we make an effort to keep ourselves in a light, you know, mindset and have good energy and, you know, think about it, like not only are we talking about like diet and who, you know, we are or not, or not having sex with, like think about just like maintaining your nervous system, right? And holding that sacred. We've learned so much more about how to regulate our nervous system in these modern times. And to be magnetic, the like the website that I have a membership with, I do their workshops all the time. There, there's always one that I'm doing that I've got ongoing. That in tandem with Kabbalah. Those are like two things that I, I cannot live without nowadays. But the to be magnetic work is particularly oriented around like regulating the nervous system and rewriting your subconscious and manifesting and doing the psychological work um, in, in a very like at your own pace kind of way. But then it actually ends up being like really um, almost faster than you would arrive at like epiphanies in therapy, I would say. Um, but yeah, regulating your nervous system, right? If you're in a low level trauma response, then you can get snippy. You can get short with people. I know I've lived in a low level trauma response for apparently most of my life until I realized over the last year or two, like how to write like that. I have an unregulated nervous system and how to regulate it. So that honoring your nervous system honoring your um, mental space, like just giving yourself time to decompress and have stillness and quiet and like waking rest, like you do when you sit in quietness and you, and you meditate. Mm -hmm. um, other ways you can take good care of your holy temple. I like to adorn myself in beautiful clothing that I like. Like when I get in a habit of just spending day in and day out in like loungewear or pajamas, like I'm like, ah, you know, I don't feel good. I don't feel like my best self. Sometimes I just like to get dressed for myself and to feel good and to feel like a goddess, you know, in this world and a divine being. And so I think, you know, anything that we can do 
it's like, it's not the act of what we're doing. It is the consciousness that we're in when we're doing it. Um, you can, I, okay. So in the morning, I like to say the morning wake up prayer, uh, before I get out of bed, which is, oh, it's on my phone. So I can, I can't remember it, but it's like, blessed are you creator? Um, uh, or like it's, it's all, uh, it's thinking the creator for the mercy of restoring my soul. But I can't remember the exact words. I, I, I read it in Hebrew and then I say it when I wake up. Then I go straight to the sink with my glass of water that's been on the nightstand and I do a kosher hand washing before I do anything else. And you say the tetragrammatron while you do it. So you would take and you, so you get the water from a vessel, um, you pour it, don't, don't do it straight under the faucet. It has to be the water in a vessel, like light in a vessel. And you take the, the water and you pour from your, hold it with your right hand. Your right hand is the hand of sharing. You pour the water into your left hand, the hand of receiving first. So share with your right hand. So pour with your right hand onto your left hand. And you'd say, yud hey, and then switch and pour the water, vav hey, and then switch again, yud hey, vav hey. And this is not a, a name that you want to be saying all the time out loud. This is very powerful light you're revealing. So you're going to be careful with the tetragrammatron. But you would do it uh, three passes. Right, or sorry, wash left, right, left, right, because you're giving with the right hand. So wash left, right, left, right. So three sets saying this, the tetragrammatron. And so that's a way to cleanse the, the hands of the negativity that gathers on you while you sleep. There are, there's negative energy that gathers around you in your sleep because when we are asleep, we're going through like this miniature version of death where most of our soul ascends to the upper realm, which leaves us vulnerable, which is why we have this instinct that we don't want to like put our foot out from under the cover night because we're like there's demons waiting to get me it's true there are <laughs> and then and the blankets really do help it's like in kabbalah they teach to to sleep with like clothes on don't sleep naked because it protects you from the dark dark entities okay so let's read the portion again the priest the holy person or the priest is completely holy including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with a cup or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So they're saying that like if you're going to take communion, right, it's not just a cup and a bread. You know, if you only have like a random cup and random bread, then you're going to set an intention on this cup and bread. You're going to say a prayer and bless it or anoint it or set aside and set the intention to make it sacred, right? But when you're, when you're taking the Eucharist, you have like a vessel, a goblet of wine, and you have a loaf of bread, probably the challah, and you take up that bread and you, and you set it aside, you make it holy, you pray over it, you bless it, um, you infuse it with light as you're saying the prayer before you eat it and that consecrates it and makes it holy. So the holy person is completely holy, including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with the cup or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body also? So it's like when we receive Christ into our heart or we activate the Christ in our heart, it is as if in that moment we have prayed and anointed ourselves with the spirit that makes us a holy person, that makes us a sacred vessel, right? So remember that, that you are a temple. And so if you're not a health nut, you don't have to be a health nut, but if you are very lax with your health, I would... Take a, an inventory of what you're drinking, what you're eating, what you're putting into your body. Are you, do you sleep well? Like, do you give yourself quality rest, good, good deep sleep to refresh yourself? Like when you sleep and your soul goes to the upper realms, 
your soul is actually being cleansed. And that is very renewing to your body and your energy. That's another reason why if you don't get good sleep, then you wake up in a bad mood. Because you didn't get to cleanse all that negativity from the day before. So yes, think about what you're taking in, you know, to your body, how you're treating your body. Um, are you maintaining your body, keeping it mobile, flexible, strong? And who are you taking into your body, right? Or who are you going into? Because that person's who they are on the inside and who they are in their secret, most secret of places. They don't even know who they are. Like that is going to be rubbing off on you. So I, I would think twice before um, hooking up with another stranger. Like you'll never think of it the same way again. You'll be like, I don't know what this person has to work off in their tycoon. Oh my gosh. We all have these different varieties of these issues, right? And it's so funny too, because if you're like, what is my tikkun? You get a lot, a lot of insight into your tikkun by looking at your astrological natal chart, like your main um, sign, like your sun, moon, rising, will tell you a lot. Because each of the signs, each of the zodiac signs have their own tikkun. They have their own strengths and they ha each have their own weaknesses or things they struggle with. So... That's kind of how you know. I can't remember which Kabbalah class we learned that in. But I've got to go back through my notes and find out. But like you can go sign by sign. And I think it's in the Book of Formations, which was written by Father Abraham. Um, Abraham, who had many sons. I think it's in the Sefer Yetzirah is the name of the book. The Book of Formations. Um, all right. So let's read this one more time and then we're out. The Priest. The holy person is completely holy, including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with the cup or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body also? Oh, back to hygiene. Y'all floss your teeth. Floss your teeth thoroughly and rigorously twice a day. <laughs> Brush your teeth scrub your tongue, do all that stuff. Like, don't be a gross person. <laughs> like my, my Kabbalah teacher, teacher David used to go into these like spiels all the time. But he'd be like, some people come up to me and they're like, I don't know why I haven't found my soulmate. And he, and he he's like, well, you can start by flossing, like go to the dentist. Like you just, there's some basic obvious things that you need to take care of. So since I'm t speaking to the general collective, um, I, it's like easy for me to make this public service announcement. Like do a self inventory. How's your hygiene? Are you taking care of everything? Is everything groomed properly, right? There's a lot of leeway these days for some pretty creative and individual expression, but we all know when something looks intentional and when it doesn't, and when something's gross and when it's not. So be intentional and don't be gross. Okay, one more time. The priest, the holy person, is completely holy, including the person's body. The holy person who takes up bread consecrates it and does the same with the cup or anything else the person takes up and consecrates. So how wouldn't the person consecrate the body also? And on that note, I am going to take shower and I'm going to eat a good din din that I made out of Whole Foods. Um, and I'm going to have some good sleep, but I, not before I get this video up so y'all can watch it Sunday morning. All right. Peace be with you. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.